When I was growing up in North Korea, I never saw anything about love stories between men and women. There is no books, no songs, no press, no movies about love stories. There is no Romeo and Juliet. Every story was propaganda to brainwash us about the Kim dictators. A turning point in my life was when I saw the movie Titanic. It was fascinating to me that anyone would make a movie out of such a shameful story. I was wondering <laughs> if the directors and actors would be cared. By the way, I'm really glad that Dick Bruce is alive. <laughs> Actually, that is what would happen to any make a movie out of such a shameful story in North Korea. How could they release such a movie? I was so curious. My curiosity didn't end there. When I was growing up in North Korea, the regime taught us that dying for the regime was the most honorable thing that anyone could do. When we were young, my sister and I saw the movie showing how beautiful it could be to die for the regime. We were inspired by it, and we pledged we would be willing to die, if necessary, for the kings. When I was growing up in North Korea, the only story I heard about the outside world, and how bad it was, and how lucky we were to be in North Korea. The North Korean regime always tried to convince me to do something for it, to die for it, controlling what we see, say, we listen to, or think what we want. But I realized that Titanic showed me a human story about love, beauty, humanity. It showed me that people could value something for themselves. I was able to connect with the film. It gave me a taste of freedom. It wasn't propaganda, but a story, people dying for love, a man willing to die for a woman. It changed my thinking. It changed the way I saw the regime and their endless propaganda. Titanic made me realize that I was controlled by the regime. I was not aware, like a fish is not aware of water. North Koreans are abducted at birth, so they don't know the concepts of freedom or human rights. They don't know that they are slaves. I'm 21 years old, and there are many changes going on inside North Korea today. And it's my generation, often called Jangmadang or Black Market Generation. It will make change permanent. North Korea's Black Market Generation has three main characteristics. The first characteristic of our Black Market Generation is it has no devotion to the Kim Dynasty. I was born in 1993, and Kim Il-sung, the country's founder, he died in 1994, and I was brainwashed to glorify him and his national self-reliance, self-economy system. But I have no actual memory of him. The second characteristic of our black market generation is it has had wide access to outside media and information. The private market provides us more than food and clothing. It provides us DVDs like movies Titanic and USBs with Wikipedia. The third characteristic of our black market generation is we are capitalistic and individualistic. We grew up with markets. We experienced selling and buying. I still remember when I was seven years old, my father told me, as long as you know how to count money, then you don't have to learn anything from school. <laughs> yeah. When I was 12, I made the first my business deal with my mom. She gave me some startup cash, and I bought, bought a rice vodka, which I bribed the orchard guard. He allowed me to sell persimmon from that orchard in the market. With a profit, I bought some candy for my mom. And I think it's a very important fact. Once you start trading for yourself, you start thinking for yourself. And that's a big threat to the Kim regime. This development of markets is important because it undermines the Sangwon system where the regime puts people into strict classes. With the governments in charge of the social classifications and food distribution, 
It always determines who would acquire rest and who would starve. But the private market is removing from that regime's control. I escaped North Korea in 2007, and I lived as an illegal immigrant in China more than a year. After my father passed away in China, my mother and I decided to escape to Mongolia. Along with five people in our team, we walked and crawled across the Gobi Desert, evading Chinese police, kidnappers, wild animals, and into Mongolia. We followed the compass. When that stopped working, we followed the stars to freedom. It seemed that only the stars were with us. Armed with knives, we were ready to kill ourselves if we were going to be sent back to North Korea. We begged Mongolian soldiers who caught us not to send us back to North Korea. We wanted to live as humans. In 2009, I made it to South Korea. Even though I escaped, I wasn't completely free regime's ideology. I still thought Kim's had special power. I even thought Kim Jong-il, the North Korean dictator, could read my mind. I was not free to think. In 2011, having the freedom to read whatever I wanted, I happened to read a book, Animal Farm. It seemed that George Orwell was talking about North Korea. This book set me free from the emotional dictators in my head. It showed me that Kims are dictators using power to oppress people, and that North Koreans deserve freedom. I cried all night as I read it. Even now, I get goosebumps as I read it. Titanic opened my eyes to see that people can live differently, and there is something else out there. The private market gave me opportunity to expose to the outside world. An animal farm set me free from brainwashing. The book symbolized freedom to me. In North Korea, the regime says they are so strong, but the reality is that they are so weak, so they can't allow other ideas. As I read it, and even when I read the Communist Manifesto, I thought this is freedom the freedom to read, opposing ideas. Lots of people think change in North Korea is impossible, but they might not realize that huge changes have already happened, and they are getting bigger and bigger every day. Before the 1990s, the regime's control was total, was like water that a cash fish cannot fear. But increasingly, the regime's propaganda does not match with the reality of, of people's lives. Everyone knows they have to break the rules by operating in markets to survive. So since the 1990s, the regime's structure of oppression has been a lot more obvious and visible to North Koreans. It's like a cage that you can run up against. But now people are finding a ways around that structure, finding a way to break it and bend it. That's why North Korean regime's control is unsustainable. The outside media and information are setting us free. The change that I went through is why I'm, op I'm optimistic that if we can expose North Koreans to outside world, we can make a difference. I hope I can work with you together to make something beautiful happen. Everyone has a power and help and support North Koreans. You can help get information inside North Korea and free people's minds. Every day in China or elsewhere, thousands of refugees are facing daily terror of deportation. You can help them to escape to freedom. When I was crossing the Gobi Desert, scared of dying, I thought <laughs> nobody in this world cared. It seemed that only the stars were with me. But you have listened to my story. You have cared. Martin Luther King Jr. said, 
Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Let's do what we can to eliminate the injustice of the Kim regime. Please join me as we make this a global movement to free North Koreans. Thank you very much.